yeah, pandemic P. Yep. Look, I hate it for Paul George because he did hit two big free throws, and he did also uh, hit a big clutch shot, but he missed both free throws that would have basically iced the game, at least made it a three-point game. So Paul George really messed up. The refs, uh, wow, that was a pretty bad game for them. Um, they were the story, especially if the Suns lost, because, um, you know, Devin Booker elbowed Pat Beverly um, while he was driving to the hoop, and they ended up giving it as an offensive foul and giving it back to the Clippers, and then they had a chance to win the game, but then Paul George messed it up. Um, so, yeah, that game was ridiculous. That should not have been an elbow to the face of Pat Beverly. It was clearly unintentional. And then Pat Beverly was the one who forced the ball out of bounds, but it changed possess uh, yeah, possession because Devin Booker's hand touched it last. They never call it like that, ever. And for the refs to make that call in such a big moment, in such a big game, was ridiculous. Um, I mean, the spirit of the rule is, even if one player touches it last or they both touch it at the same time, it's a split second, whatever, the spirit of the rule is the person who forced the ball out of bounds is the one who caused it to go out of bounds. But they didn't play the rule that way that time. They said it was off Booker. I'm just happy you guys all know that I picked the Clippers to win the championship. So you could say that I was rooting for the Clippers in that moment. But at the same time, I don't want to see um, the game officiated like that and the game taken away from the better team or the team that deserved it. And I thought tonight the Suns deserved to win that game. They felt in control most of the game. Um, every single... Clippers bucket felt like a minor miracle, but the but the Suns were getting almost whatever they wanted. Um, Cameron Payne had such a great game because the Clippers decided we're going to shut down Devin Booker and let someone else beat us. Well, Cameron Payne heard that and was like, all right, I'll be the one to beat you. And he had his best NBA game ever, not just regular season or postseason, um, just his best game ever. And he is the reason why the Suns won that game. The refs and Paul George are almost the reason the Suns lost that game. So Paul George, pandemic P, you could call him whatever you want. But the fact is that he missed the two most important shots of the game, which was those two free throws that would have iced the game. Um, and, you know, I feel bad for PG because in the two, two or three minutes before that, he had made two clutch free throws. And he made a clutch two to put them on top by one. That should have won the game. But then um, they fouled him and he missed those two free throws. And I don't know about you guys, but when they fouled Paul George, I thought, okay, cool. That's it. Game over with like 8.7 seconds to go. He misses the first one. He misses the second one. It gives the Suns life. Um, and so they go down and hit the biggest shot of the game, which is the one that won it. And um, then... Uh, uh, DeAndre Ayton with just, I mean, look, DeAndre Ayton had such a great game, and it was so cool to see him win it with that inbound dunk um, that, of course, the refs had to review over and over and over. But it was cool because DeAndre Ayton, just the career arc that he's had already. Remember when he was drafted number one overall, then it was Marvin Bagley, then it was Luka Doncic, um, and of course there's always the Luca and Trey thing with the comparison. Now we look at that draft and I'm not saying that we would draft it any differently. I think, I still think Luca should have gone number one, but we're not saying that the Suns blew that pick. Of course they didn't blow that pick. We're not saying that the Hawks totally blew that trade. You would still rather have Luca, but they didn't blow it. So it's pretty cool that these playoffs have shown us a lot about that draft class that DeAndre Ayton and Trey Young are both, of course, worth the max. DeAndre Ayton will get maxed out this summer. Luka Doncic will get maxed out. And Trey Young will all get max contracts this summer, which is awesome. And that's what these playoffs have given us. What these playoffs have taken away from us is some of the stars. But what they've given us is a new, younger generation of guys who we all know the league is in good hands, right? And Porter Jr. is also there. I agree. Um, 
but the thing about Porter Jr. is his defense and his ball handling, I think, are atrocious. So, But I agree, he's going to get maxed out. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, my big stories of the game, honestly, were that Paul George choked those two free throws. Cameron Payne basically won this game for them, but the guy who literally won it with that basket that dunk at the end was deandre ayton so look the suns are a great story they're gonna get cp3 back for game three that is what a report said uh, during the game was that the suns are very optimistic they're gonna get chris paul back i think even though they've come back from down 2-0 twice already the clippers need Kawhi leonard like they need Kawhi. like it's obvious it's really a good sign for them that they're able to hang in these games without Kawhi. But the fact that Chris Paul is coming back, to me, the Clippers need Kawhi Leonard to win this thing. And by the way, like, all good for the Clippers for keeping this under wraps. We have no idea what Kawhi's status is. We just don't. Um, because they're keeping that so quiet, and that is Kawhi's... Um, his style, you know, Kawhi always loves to keep everything secretive and the Clippers are going along with that. So we do know that it is a knee sprain and it could be with any ligament, the ACL, the MCL, the PCL, whatever. Um, and so, and the LCL, I believe is the other one, but we don't know when Kawhi is going to come back. The uh, reports say that Chris Paul is going to come back for game three. So those are my thoughts, guys. What do you think? Uh, let's like take questions and have conversation here for like a minute or so. Um, let's see. What do you guys think? If you got a super chat, obviously I'd appreciate it. Do you think Kawhi will come back in this series? Mm, I, it's impossible for me to say that. I really have no idea. It, it would be total speculation. Do you think the Suns can win a chip? Yes, I do. The Suns can definitely win a championship. Um, and the reason I say that is mostly because of the bracket and it's mostly because of the competition. So right now in the East, it's either the Hawks or the Bucks. And, you know, if the Suns come out of the West, yes, I absolutely do think that they can win a championship, um, which is insane because if you look at um, two years ago, the Suns had the second worst record in the league. And now two years later, they could win a chip? Like, that's insane. That actually gives so much hope to all other um, to all other teams in the league. Like, we can, the Suns could show, be one of the worst teams in the league, and then two years later win it all. How crazy would that be? That's awesome. Did the ref reviews ruin the game? No, it slowed it down, it hurt it, but ultimately, you know, what would have been really bad is if the Clippers won that game and we all kind of felt like the Suns had it stolen from them. That, to me, would have been worse. The fact, yes, the, the ref reviews put a damper on the game, but it didn't ruin the game. What would have ruined it is if the rest legitimately stole the win from the Suns. That would have been horrible. Did that missed free throw invalidate PG's playoff performance? Ooh, that's a big question. No, not yet, because, um, because you know, job not finished, as Kobe would say. The playoffs aren't done, so let's just wait. Because, you know what, one thing that we've – one thing – that we've seen, especially in these playoffs, is making these harsh, quick judgments like, did PG missing the free throws invalidate his playoff performance? We could say that now, but it's not over. And if if we just jump to these conclusions, we would, you know, the Mavericks are amazing when they blew the 3-2 oh, the lead. We could say something about the Jazz, but it's, you know, we, we can't make these snap judgments yet. We can't. We have to wait to see what happens the rest of the way. But sure, that, that, was, that was a really bad thing uh, for him. Very pandemic P of him um, to miss those two free throws. So, all right, guys, big, 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 big night in the NBA. Great game. Um, Suns up 2-0. Chris Paul coming back. Pistons getting the number one pick. Houston the number two pick. Golden State keeps their pick. Golden State's picking 7th and 14th if they don't trade those things, which Steph Steph should walk right into Bob Myers' office tomorrow and say, you have got to trade Wiggins, Wiseman, and our two picks, or I'm out of here. You need to get me a star because we need to extend my prime, and I'm going to be in my prime because I'm Steph and Curry. And that needs to be validated with at least one more chip, and we're not going to get it with a bunch of rookies. That is what he needs to tell Bob Myers. 
So, guys, cannot wait for the rest of the playoffs. Cannot wait for the Eastern Conference Finals to start tomorrow. Uh, you guys are the best, and I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern for another video. Late.